Hello everybody, it's Dragana from Sasebo. Welcome and welcome back to my channel. Today I prepared something a little bit different. I thought I'd take you along the ride with me of creating a special book jacket. It is for mine and my husband's friend. We've been friends and he's been our client for many years. And he's also a Catholic priest, Dominican order. And he asked me to design jackets uh, for the books that he uses in sermon. There's several books, but today I'm going to show you just one. I have some requirements, what needs to be front, what needs to be at the back, and also the colors and his preference of images. His brother is also an artist and he does these beautiful graphics that uh, I need to put one of these graphics here, something like this. And he expressed wish that uh, the jacket has a little bit of texture, so it's not just fabric, so that it has a bit of texture like this. For example, I've done this as a sample uh, with a bit of bricks showing, a little bit of purple, a bit of red, but mostly white and gold. Also, the image that's going to go at the front, I've done the version with this one, but he wants me to try and do one with this image that I printed in different sizes. This is the original. But that's too big for this, so I'm thinking I'm going to use that one. I am going to paint on this jacket, so I'm going to use uh, acrylics and whatever paint I need, and I'm going to be stitching. So I was thinking about what sort of fabric to use, and it occurred to me that I have a roll of canvas, which is uh, for painting acrylics and oils. So this is tough, it's fabric, I can sew use my sewing machine on it, I can paint on it, it's already protected with gesso and uh, it's not gonna, the color is not gonna go through. So this is my uh, solution for that. Another requirement was that the jacket fits snugly so that the book doesn't um, slide out of it and perhaps to have a bit of closure. So I done like a little sketch on the paper and uh, I thought something like this, if I have a metallic, oh, this fell out, metallic, not metallic, if I have a magnetic closure like this, here, that might hold it, it won't go over the image, and it might be good enough, like that. As you can see, I've done these uh, lines here. This is just an idea, I wanted to do a bit of uh, needlework as well so I was thinking of using just some wax thread in maybe black or gray and do this like a fake spine but before I start any of the creative work I actually have to work out how to get the dimensions of this book jacket I'm going to make a little sketch for myself the book has the back this and that so I'm just going to just a rough sketch That's the spine. All right, I'm going to take this my measurement tool. This is a good one. It shows me both centimeters and inches. And I'm going to place it here like this. And I'll just go around and make sure the book is closed when you do this. So it gives me 26 centimeters or 10 and a quarter inches. So I have 26 centimeters there okay and over here i have 18 and a half centimeters or seven and a quarter inches so 18 and a half i'm going to turn it this way now when i do this book jacket these let's put this aside these covers need to slide inside so i need to have uh, extra fabric to go over here and I'm thinking at least half of the width so I'm just gonna go actually a little bit more if I have ten and a half but I'm going to go with six centimeters I think that should be enough I need to add six centimeters on each side okay six and six to be able to actually take it to my sewing machine and join these uh, edges i need to add sewing allowance 
over here, over here, put the numbers right across, never mind, but also here because um, I don't want to have the raw edge here, I want to be able to do the hem properly, so I'm going to add that as well. And now this is your preference, how much you want. I usually go for either half an inch or one and a half centimeters. So one and a half centimeters this way and this way. And also one and a half centimeters here and here. So when we put all of this together, 26 plus 6 plus 1 and a half, we get 41 centimeters. And with this, we have 1 and a half plus 18 and a half plus 1 and a half. And we get 21 and a half centimeters. So I need to cut myself a piece of canvas that is 41 centimeters this way and 21 centimeter that way and that will give me enough to do the hems the, the stitching and of course for the cover so I'm going to cut it and then I will be back okay I cut myself a piece of that canvas it's going to be on the inside that's going to be the side on which I'm going to paint and this is 41 centimeters by 21 and a half Let's see in inches, in case you want to know, but it will obviously depend. If you want to attempt something similar with a book, this will be um, different depending on the size of your book. And you can see it's a little bit over 16 inches, and this is almost eight and a half. This is going to be wrapped around. Like this. I just want to test it. And this one is going to be left around here. It needs to be a tight fit. That's good. That's very good. So what I want to do now is just make myself some marks here where the spine begins because it's a little bit rounded. I can't really tell. So I'm just going to make a mark here and that is 11 centimeters. I'm going to do the same here. It should be the same on both sides. Okay, that is it. Now I can see that this is the front and this is the back. And my picture needs to go here. And my friend expressed the wish to have um, one of these images at the center here. It's that one, but I printed it reverse size because I want to do the image transfer. And when you do image transfer, you need to have the image that you want to transfer, you need to have it reversed. I'm going to cut up one of these images first and I want to do this effect. I'm not sure if you can see but I used this crackle varnish, mosaic crackle varnish and once it dries I want to rub some gold paint into it and I really like that effect. So I need to do that with this. And because it, it's a two-step process, requires a bit of drying time in between. So I want to do that first so it has enough time to dry while I work on the rest of the project. So um, you see this here? I don't want to fussy cut around that. So I'm going to leave a little bit of white space around this. All right, I cut out this image, but before I do anything to it, I just want to say a few words about that. I printed this also on just a regular cardstock, 350 GSM, and it is, you can see it's really white. 
Now, that shouldn't be a problem. But I want this book and whatever I do to the cover, I want it to be really tough because my understanding is it's going to be used a lot. And I fear that the paper or the card stock might eventually start to, you know, um, tear. And uh, I decided to use this paper, which is basically oil sketch pad especially created for oil and acrylics. This paper is very tough and I've had it for years and it also has a really nice texture. Uh, I don't know if you can see. This probably doesn't show but it has like crisscross um, kind of texture going on there and I like the fact that it's not so snowy white, it's more like a creamy white. But when I was attempting this the first time, because I have an inkjet printer and not a laser printer, uh, as soon as you add something uh, like a wet medium over it, the paint starts to bleed. So I practiced on different uh, images and I found out that um, it's best if I actually first put a transfer medium on top. For some reason, it did not uh, dissolve the the paint and so it's just basically transfer and decoupage medium and I'm going to seal the ink that's on that paper first with this and after that I will work with the crackle varnish so let's do that first so this needs to be done quickly you don't want to press too hard you don't want to work it too long because inkjet printers on this kind of paper that's a little bit glossy the ink stays on the surface doesn't actually you know go inside of the paper so it's easy to to smudge it so uh, fingers crossed i won't smudge it too much <laughs> i'll just do it quickly okay and this dries fairly quickly, so this is just to protect the paint. All right, so we sealed that. I'll put that aside there to dry. Another thing I want to stress out, because I said I was going to do a image transfer here. I know I'm going to get comments like, why didn't you print on this straight? This is why. Look. It's just really not good because my printer is not really meant for printing on fabric and that's really fade uh, image. It's nothing like this. So I wasn't really happy how that looked. No matter what I did, it just looked really washed out. So I'm going to do the image transfer. I think that's the safest option. But I won't do it now because I want to work on the background first. And then I will do that image transfer using this same transfer and decoupage medium on top of that. I want to start now with adding some texture. So I want to have a little bit of, you know, raised texture but in this case i think i have too much now now i want to have a bit less maybe a little bit here a little bit there and a, a just a touch over here and since this image is long and narrow this is going to be my front you see a lot more of it is going to be visible so i don't need to use it all over the place just in some areas would look better i think and the same goes for here and also for the spine. I won't put too much on the spine, especially not where the folds are going to be because um, it might actually break there. So I'm going to avoid this area, this and this area here. You can do this step with just plain white gesso. Even thicker acrylics would do, but I have a texture paste that I want to use because um, it's probably a little bit more flexible than just the gesso and it dries quite quickly. Now another thing I want to make sure is not to go too close to where the stitches are going to be. Again it might break so no need to actually go all the way to the lines since I'm going to have a little bit there, a little bit there and maybe a little bit here. I will just do something like this and I'm just using the palette knife. and. 
this is not easy doing while you're sitting down <laughs> just a little bit like that don't want it there you can wipe off uh, the areas that you don't want it's not a problem it's still fresh and it's okay like that so now i want i said i wanted a little bit here let's take a little bit more So, and a tiny little bit, maybe, here. Okay. And I think I went here a little bit too far, so I'm just going to wipe this and all these that are not really complete. I'm just using a dried tissue here, wet tissue that's dried. I like how that looks, I hope you can see. So I'm going to do something similar on this side. I cut this one out just so I can see if I'm going to put it there, I want to, I went a bit too far away here. I'm just going to wipe that off while it's still kind of fresh. You can also use your palette knife to take the excess. Something like that. I like how that looks. So this is going to go somewhere here. I'm going to let this dry a little bit and then I can paint over it, but it has to dry. Okay. So when you make your um, crackle, I'm sure you know this, but I haven't really used it much in the past. And I bought this probably a year ago and I'm just waiting for the reason to use it. And that reason came perfect timing so I'm just gonna get another brush and it tells me here I have to apply step one in an even layer okay and wait until it turns clear and then I need to apply this one which is step two so I don't know if it's the same with all of these you can buy these from many different makers but I'm sure other there are other brands but this one was available here in the shop so I bought this one okay so I'm just going to actually just put a little bit like that over the surface and I'm going to spread it with my brush it's it's kind of like glue like white glue I'm just going to brush this over the entire image It's in an even layer. I don't know if this is even enough. It's the best I can do. Okay. And I need to wait till this becomes clear again. As you can see, it is all milky white now. It has to be clear. So I need to paint this in white with a little bit of purple and a little bit of red and a bit of gold a little bit of this which is cream just so it's not that just white you know have a bit of variety there and i'll just use this white brush and 
just suppose you can leave it um leave these areas white where they are but this is just just so it's not paint and i don't know i think i need to paint it white first like i'm just going as you can see i'm just going a little bit over these lines uh, but not all the way to the edges And I'm just taking a little bit of white, a little bit of that cream color. And just bring this loosely. Acrylics dry really fast. Would be ideal to actually do this with oil paints but they take forever to dry and they stay sticky for a while so acrylics is i think good enough i'm gonna add a bit more of that darker color down the bottom just to create that illusion of uh, what's the up and what's down just a little bit more here some areas where the bricks are it's still going to be white but with just a little bit of variation, so it's not just, you know, a piece of canvas that hasn't been worked on. Most of us who do junk journals, we don't like white paper, <laughs> so I don't like white canvas. A few strokes here and there, maybe a couple there, just with it. Where the bricks are, so it's a little bit... It's a really nice warm white now and I'm quite happy with it. Okay, so I'm going to put that aside and that needs to dry as well. Then we can continue working on our background. Okay, here's our little image and now we need to do the step two of the crackle. This is not really see-through but it is touch dry. So it's probably safe to add another layer so i'm just going to put a few drops like this put that underneath and i'm going to spread over i'm sorry i moved the camera with my um, brush because i have the cable charging cable on phone battery just died <laughs> okay so just adding this step two to the step one and i will leave it to dry and let the crackle form fine cracks will appear on drying 12 to 16 hours when i do these image transfers i put the, the transfer medium and then i put that on top but i don't want the transfer media everywhere so i'll just put it directly on here Don't be stingy with it. If you want a good image transfer, just put a good amount. Okay, so I need to figure out where are my edges and just do that. So I'll just bend this here. And this here. Just so that I can see. And now I can see I need to move this a little bit 
because that's going to be the back of my jacket so um, just by eye I think that's a good positioning and I will get my bone folder and just gently squish because I want to get good contact and just wipe off the excess all right I'm gonna wait for this to dry and for this to dry and then I will continue probably tomorrow because it's almost night time the lighting is not the best at this time of the day so I'll continue tomorrow here I am uh, a day later this is completely dry and so is this I hope you can see the little cracks formed but this is going to be more obvious once I add a little bit of gold wax over it and I'm hoping that the gold is going to go in between those um, cracks and create that porcelain effect all right so now we have to take this off and I usually do this just by adding a little bit of water just like this. the paper needs to be wet Going to just put a glove. I'm just going to slowly peel this off by rubbing it gently. Take all of this off. You can do this under running water as well but then i will make everything wet and then i will have to wait for it to dry again so i'll just be patient and keep running when you do this uh the paper that you're using it's best if it's just a copied thickness you know not, not anything too thick because then this process might be a bit longer and more difficult so just ordinary paper works just all right there we go it's like a pretty good transfer i'm happy with it let this dry a little bit and then I will work on this. I'll just use this uh, Inca Gold metallic gloss paint. And I'm just going to use my fingers to rub this into the cracks. Just to make them a little bit more obvious. Where the ink is really dark, it actually stands out better, but it works on the white as well. I really like this effect. And I'll just go around the edges of gold as well. I want to get rid of the excess if there's any, like, because I really want the gold in the cracks but not necessarily all over so i'll just using a almost dried up um, wipe i hope you can see and i cut a piece of uh, black cardstock and i was thinking of mounting this on top of that i just feel like it looks a little bit better but i'm going to try something on this side if i turn this into gold just want to see that would look 
Ähm I like that. <laughs> Maybe I'll do that. Because I don't have any gold cardstock, but I have the black one. Can make it gold. I'm going to fold this carefully. That's going to be my front. I think I like the gold better, so I'm going to do it with the gold. now really flexible this after you do this to the picture it becomes really flexible almost leather like it's just using a little bit of ink this is just nothing special just ordinary ink but thinking just adding a little bit first and then I'll see how it's going to react with water and a little bit of Red. It's meant to be like a wash, it's not meant to be anything defined, almost like watercolor. That's what I was told, and I need to just Take off the excess. I think I need a little bit more purple. I suppose it, this step can be done with acrylics as well. But I don't want to put too much, you know, and since I am going to protect the surface with varnish eventually, I think just adding ink is good enough. work a little bit here on this side cut some of that I want to add like a little bit of a shadow here to add a little bit of uh, white over here because that area looks to me a little bit dirty I just want to bring it to life a little bit
Okay, yeah. I hope I've made an improvement. Perhaps I should have left it just the way it was, but... Oh, well, I think I wanted it to look more a part of this rather than just the glued picture. Okay, so now I need to add a little bit of gold and I have this uh, spray paint. I should probably cover this with something. side and now we're working with gold just spray it for this do a bit of you can do a few drops there brush is dry, I'll just with a dry brush I'm just going to do this a little bit more white I feel like in some areas I put too much of the gold This is dry enough for me to take it to my sewing machine and I want to attach this right there. I have my marks here, see? So this needs to be in the middle. This glue is not going to dry immediately so I'll have time to maneuver it. First I'll do it by eye, then I'll make sure it is in the right spot. It seems to be the right position. So that is glued down. But um, I'm not comfortable to leave it just like that. So I will take it to my sewing machine and I will just do the straight stitch close to this white area so that I catch both this and that to the fabric. Okay, this is what it looks like. I think it looks pretty good. Uh, I'm not aiming for perfection, so a little bit uh, wavy areas but that's fine it just adds to that uh, handmade look so when you, when you do something like this and you want to make sure that the threads don't start unraveling you need to pull all the sides to the back like this just pull on this one a little bit and the other one should follow yeah okay, so you see I have all four threads on the back and that's okay like that. So I'm going to just make a knot here. Just to secure it. And then cut off the excess. Like that. So that's now nice and neat on this side. I need to fold this here. Like this. And 
take it to my sewing machine to stitch and same on this side here okay now i'll take the book it seems to be dry but you know i don't want to mess it up and because i have to do this step like this fabric is really thick so when you do the sewing and you turn this in this is going to get smaller the same goes here I can't go all the way I have to move it a couple of millimeters away okay probably like that like this and here okay this here and this as well the closure would need to be attached to this part here before I join these all right um I'll put that aside and I have my sketch here so I know approximately how big this closure should be I'm going to cut it from this white leather this needs to be four and a half centimeters or one and three quarter inches. So just mark that. And this is seven and a half times two, which is 15 centimeters. I'll cut 16 and I can always trim it down. This doesn't have to be perfectly cut because I will definitely trim it off later on. Now on one side, on the other side, I need to put one of those, this one, somewhere here, and I hope you can see this, it has those three holes here, that's the middle, but I need to make cuts here and here. The easiest way to do it is to fold it like that. Let's make small incisions that's, that's all now you take these and put them through like that and then you place these over now with these things sometimes I push them out but this time I want to push them in because I fear that this will kind of if I push them on the outside, they will kind of make pressure on this leather. So I don't want to do that. In time, it might cause a problem. So I'm just going to push them on the inside like that. And that is it for that. Now I will have to glue these two down together. So I'll just wait for this to dry. I'll trim off the excess and then we're ready to stitch it to our color. I have to take this apart. I'll just push like this and use a pencil to mark the fold. Okay. Now here I need to mark okay, so this is going to be and I need to stitch this like this something like that something 
shipping like that. Yeah, it seems to be in the right spot. Okay, so I need to do. Um, I need to stitch this to this right there. I'll just put a little mark because I also have to do the stitching here on this and then finish off there. But that's the position. Okay, so I'll do that quickly and now we'll be back. This is what that looks like. That's the other side. So I need to pull all the threads to this side. Okay, now let's put this back together how it was. And now all I need to do is take this to my sewing machine and do the stitching here and here, here and there, there and there done the stitching now I just have to secure all of these threads okay so now we need to trim these corners just don't catch the thread but just like that on the side it's going to be a little bit easier to turn and also here these I don't want to create extra bulk, it's not necessary, so okay. so exciting. I, well, I hope this is gonna be alright. It's a little stiff now. I don't want to break the paint, but this cross will be alright. these corners a little bit. So a little bit worried about that, but it seems to be all right. Okay, now this one. Oh, I have to be really careful here. I don't want to damage the image. It's a little bit nerve wracking. Because if I don't do it properly, all the effort that I put into it will be for nothing. Okay. So now, before I do anything to finalize it, I think I need to test it. And I hope that these are correct because I don't really want to go back to the sewing machine. <clears throat> so far it fits, but I have to take these in a little bit more. And let's see this. Okay, this fits just right here. That's where I need to install it. That will be there. Close stitch here and here, and probably continue all the way there, and that way this area here is going to be a little bit tighter you see how much space i have now i think that's that's what i'm going to do i think that would be the best okay let's test it now this 
should be a more snug fit. Oh, it looks very nice. Now I want to just uh, see if anywhere else I need to do some uh, painting, like here, you see my pencil marks are showing through and I want to cover that with a bit of white Satin varnish. A clean brush. I think two coats of varnish would be ideal. I will put varnish here as well onto these and these and once it's dry I will repeat the process this is done now I'm gonna do this put that underneath and I know a way to cut just make incisions with the knife I'm going to put that through And then this, and again I will push them up toward the inside. Wow, that's looking good. So all this that's left to do is to have that decorative stitching, and I will use my sketch for this. Put that right there in the middle. And use a pot tool. I already have the drawing, so I'll just I'll just make holes. I want to do here because this is one and it's gonna be crossed over. So I need to put a hole there. Also visible, and I have this wax thread. Honestly, I don't know how much I need. I just measure like this. And then double it. And a little bit more, <laughs> just in case. I'll start from the middle and go like this. Hopefully, it'll work out. So if I go here, I won't have that one. Just 
starting to look good. You can always adjust this later on. last one in here okay this is what it looks like on this side all straight and here we have these I could have gone here as well but like I have this I kind of like it like this I think they're all good and I'll just make a knot Probably have a little bit too much of the thread there, but you know, I didn't want to risk not having enough. Okay, so that is it for that bit. I think it looks quite interesting. Yeah. And now, it's the number one, which is a Roman number one. So I'll just maybe lightly here draw with my pencil like this like this I will poke holes it's just much easier than those two this and make another knot. Just make sure this is tight. I just want to test it now. It is quite cute. I love it. And now it fits perfectly. Look, it's not going anywhere. It is a snug fit. Fits as a glove, is that what they say? And it closes perfectly. Wow, it's done. I really love it. I love how it turned out. It is uh, really nice in hand. It's got a bit of that texture from that um, canvas, but also the protection of varnish, a bit of crackle there. The stitching just adds a little bit, you know. If you can imagine, there's going to be five books, so they're all going to have different number. And the image transfer worked out just fine. The bricks gold and, and white here we have a bit of purple and a bit of red and magnetic closure i hope you enjoyed this video thank you so much for watching and i hope i see you soon in my next video bye for now